Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by GhostBed.com. What was the call like that they were going to do this series about you guys? <laughs> well, it's funny because uh, a friend of mine, I live in the D.C. area, and a friend of mine here is a small-time producer. He introduced us to a couple of Hollywood producers, and I went and met them. And, and you know, I'm in D.C. Javier's down in San Antonio. Mm. <clears throat> um, so we stay in touch, but, but both those guys, they want to take our story and they had a personal agenda. They want to make political statements out mm -hmm. of it. And, and we're pretty much apolitical. We make fun of everybody that does that kind of work. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and, and all along we thought nobody really cares about this story cause it's just too old. You know, I mean, it's just, it's just out there. So anyway, uh, when this guy, Eric Newman called, he contact contact us through a retired Marine that we worked with in Columbia. And uh, I told him, I said, you know what? Thank you for the offer, but we're not interested. And of course, the Marines like you son of a, you know, whatever. And, and just, he blasted me on the phone. I'm like, okay, I'll call this guy. You know? So I call Eric Newman. He's the creator of Narcos executive producer. Mm -hmm. And uh, he mm -hmm. gave me his little spiel and I turned him down on the phone. Javier and I had already discussed it. And I'm sure he about fell out of his chair because we found in dealing with Hollywood, people will sell their souls to be on television. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, um, he said, listen, I'm, I'm coming to DC anyway. Would you just have dinner with me and a couple of writers? Let us, you know, give you our spiel. And if you say no, it's no. And I'm thinking, and this is honest God's truth. <laughs> I mean, I've been a cop my whole life, right? Yeah. I'm thinking, all right, these are Hollywood producers. We're going to go to a really nice restaurant and it's going to be free. So I thought, yeah, I'll go. Mm -hmm. And sure enough, we went to this fancy restaurant. Uh, I couldn't pronounce most of the stuff on the menu, but in the meantime, Javier and I did our back, our homework on these, on Eric Newman and the other guys. Turned out Eric's father's Randy Newman, who wrote mm -hmm. a lot of the Hollywood songs and some of the older mm -hmm. movies and all that stuff and very successful. And our personalities just clicked. And at the end of the night, he said, so he said, what are you going to do now? And I said, well, I'll talk to Javier, but I'll recommend that let's follow through and see what happens with you guys. And Eric said, as we're leaving the restaurant, he said, one more question. He said, why are you guys so hesitant to tell your story? And I was just real honest with him. I said, Eric, the last thing we want anybody to ever do is glorify this piece of shit, a yeah. guy, Pablo yeah. Escobar, <laughs> who's nothing more than a mass murderer. And he promised us right then. He said, I promise you, we will not glamorize him. Uh, in our opinion, in Javier and I's opinion, we believe Eric has lived up to his word. So that's how it all got started. That's really funny that he's related to Randy Newman. If you could have gotten Randy Newman to score Narcos, it'd be yeah. a way different series. He could sing short people. You've got a <laughs> friend in me. Because pa Popeye was a short guy. What is <laughs> yeah, it? Yeah, that, yeah, that yeah, yeah. Button Man. Have you seen his documentary? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah it, it was pretty it's, good. It's incredible. But every time <clears throat> somebody gets murdered, they just pop in that Randy Newman song, You've Got a Friend in Me. <laughs> uh, that would be so good. Um, it's uh, funny you say that because, yeah, yes, Hollywood does have an agenda. And... You know, once you sign your, your life rights away, that's it. I mean, they can do whatever they want after that. It's it's 50 50. So we've had everybody on the show. Marcus Luttrell is a buddy mm -hmm. of ours um, from uh, obviously Lone Survivor. He sold, you know, the rights to his and it ended up being Mark Wahlberg, who's maybe about half of Marcus's height in real life. And uh didn't even bother to do a Texas accent in that movie. Um, no, Mark Wahlberg. No, he's like uh, he's like McConaughey. He never does anybody else's accent. No, no. Mark Mark Wahlberg is like South Boston, irritated and confused. Yeah. That's his. That's yeah. his guy. And yeah. That's, for it doesn't matter. He could be playing a woman. And that'd still be his guy. So. Yeah, and that was that was the first thought when I watched uh, your series on Netflix. I was like, oh shit, they they actually did a great job with it. Knocked it out of the park. Because you don't, you really don't know. I mean, it it could have ended up real bad. Mm -hmm. Um, what's your participation like in it now? Are you guys on as tech advisors? Do you go to set? Um, do, do you call in? What's the process with you guys behind the scenes on the Netflix series? Well, you know, um, they sent us up there. And, and like I said, we're not TV people. We didn't hear us the first time with them. So, you know, we sat with them for about two weeks and they got like 12 writers and they have read every book, seen every documentary out there. So, you know, and we're not used to this. So, man, we told them everything like a cop, right? What happened, uh, how it all went down, our participation, details, because we were there, you know, during during the search for mm -hmm. Pablo Escobar. So, man, you know, and uh, we took a lot of original stuff we still kept, and uh, but they weren't really interested in all that. So then, uh, so when we come back, you know, they start sending you the scripts. And it's like, man, hey, that didn't happen. And uh, like, yeah. uh, 
but then I think you hit it on the head. You know, there's uh, what what do they call it? Artistic uh, license. license. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's very important. You know what? And I'll uh, I'm going to mention it to you all. My part. If you see the second part, my character. You think that I'm on the dirty side. That I'm a dirty DA agent mm-hmm. helping those pimps. You know the you know, screwing all the women out there and, you know, snitches, communists, everything, right? Yeah. And uh, being on the take. And then, uh, you know, but before they did that, it's kind of interesting, though. I got a, you know, and Eric Newman called me up personally. He says, oh, yeah, man, you know what? That second series, your character, we're going to put you out to a little bit, be more on the shady side. We know that didn't happen, but, uh, you know, you know, and by the way, he says, I'm going to send you a piece of paper. Don't even look at it. Just sign it, send it back. I said, Eric, of course. Well, what is that? Just basically that you're okay with us doing it that way. Basically, what I signed was that I would not be able to sue Netflix because of my character assassination. <laughs> and you know what, guys? You know, my thought on that was, I know I was making money. I didn't give a shit. I'll sign whatever it was. What else do you want me to sign? Yeah, I would yeah, you can, you can, you can, you can, you can judge me up here in my fucking mansion, bitch. Exactly. About that? Yeah, I would have said, look, let's up it. Let's up that number by 10, 20 percent. And uh, you can say I was I, I'm I was a trans at some point. You yeah. know? Um, I wish I would have said that. Man. Yeah, but well, you know, you're just like. You're making a little money, and you know, not that much, but it's like, oh, well, okay, yeah. Don't I worry wonder. About it. I wonder this when. Uh, so, what are the chances? Hey, this is a recommendation for you, uh, Javier. You should dress up like the Mandalorian for Halloween next year, just to troll Pablo Pascal. That's all I would do. <laughs> if somebody played me, if somebody played me in a fucking TV show or a movie, all I would do was dress up like all their characters every year and send them pictures of it. That's right. For the rest, <laughs> for the rest of their yeah, life. That's why I got Pedro Pascal in my bag. Yeah. You see him in the yeah. He's a great actor. <laughs> great, great actor. Um, great actor. And what? you know what? Nicest guy in the world. We, He's just a great guy to work with. So, you know, and, and you know what? One thing that we did that I don't think they, they were expecting it. Steve got it arranged through our headquarters, which we couldn't do that right now. But we went with them to our DEA training academy. They they were embedded for one week. Like you said, how Steve, we got that authorized, but they were up there in DEA. And they went through undercover surveillance. And it really helped them prepare the part because they told us they were going to prepare the part like a police officer. And obviously, you know, ours is a little bit, it's a different role. So by being up there one week and they did everything, they did the surveillances, the shoot, don't shoot, undercover. Uh, who got killed? Boy, uh, boy right, Steve? You know, exercise? Yeah. Yeah. He <laughs> he tried to be Joe Cool and they shot him with a fake gun. <laughs> <clears throat> That's what needs to happen. Like, let's really get into it, you know? Yeah, everybody that's, that's got all these opinions about what it's like to uh, be a police officer or an operator or something like that, just put them through those shoot-no-shoot shoot scenarios with sim rounds, though, so it actually hurts when you get shot. <laughs> uh, and, that's, and that's what they hit him with. Oh, yeah. I, I got hit in the neck with one of those things one time. It was not fun. Uh, did he check out after that? Was he like, dude, I'm, I'm all good. I think I've researched the ca- I'm good or I'm getting out of here. Well, I think he had to go put, change his pants there because we they, they had this guy come out of the back room, Mongo, and he comes in and – he pats, he stands him up, pats him down. He finds his undercover gun. You brought a gun in my house. Who the heck are you? you know, and he just blasts you. Know, he just blasts him verbally. <laughs> then Mongo goes in the back room and then sneaks back out. And with his own undercover gun, pops him three times. Boyd slid down on the floor out of his chair. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> I think he shit his pants. <laughs> we're, <laughs> we're over in the corner just laughing our butts off at him. But, you know, hey, I've been there too. You make... That's why you go through training. You learn, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And you know, real quick, the the object of the exercise was it's in a house. You know, you're not you don't know who you're dealing with. The object is don't go inside the house. Very simple, right? He went inside the house, got shot, and you know. But anyways, when uh, when they leave, they, he he leaves a poster, and it's still hanging at the bar at the DA Academy. There is a bar, and he's in, he's got his name says don't whatever you do, don't go inside the house. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, when you were talking about your sex life and then them taking liberties to it, was that true at least? Oh, come on, man. You know, that's true. No, that everything was true. Come on, yeah, man. I bet it was nuts. <laughs> you dude. know what? Colombian women people, are amazing. No, nah, you know what? I tell people, I, you know what? It didn't happen, but you know what? I wish it would have happened. Believe me. I wanted it to happen. <laughs> oh, so that's not that part, was, was, part wasn't true. You know, I, yeah, you know what? I'm single and I'm I was dating, of course, but I didn't date snitches. I, I yeah. did it a lot. 
girls in Colombia. I mean, you know, I'm by myself, and uh, it's a beautiful country, you know. Uh, so, yeah, I did my fair share of, you know, hanging out. <laughs> really, we're, so, we're so using a lot of euphemisms here. A lot of this, is, this is my partner, so I got to take up for him here just a second. He did not date hookers, snitches, yeah. or communists, but every other woman in that country was fair game. 